Hello everyone, I feel comfortable about the microphone. Um, hello everyone, uh, I'm uh, Konstantinos Dimakos. I'm a research and development engineer in uh, Livanova. It's a medical devices company uh, based uh, in mainly in Italy. Um, and my research focuses on how to optimize the uh, national stents that are implanted inside the body uh, through cardiac surgery. Uh, how to optimize uh, these uh, components uh, through uh, shot pinning. So, a few words about uh, my company. Uh, it's a relatively new company. Uh, it comes from a merger from two major companies, an Italian sewing group, uh, whose uh, plants are mainly based in uh, Salugia in Italy, Milan, uh, Munich, and uh, Clamart in France, uh, and Cyberonics, an American company. And uh, yeah, the merger is called Livanova. It was it, it happened on uh, November 2015, so it's relatively new. And uh, it has been divided into these three uh, business units: the cardiac surgery, the CRM, cardiac rhythm management, and neuromodulation. Uh, I have not much knowledge about the third one. It belongs to Cyberonics. Uh, I worked in the cardiac surgery unit, where we uh, mainly design, manufacture biological and mechanical uh, heart valves and uh, amyloplasty rings as well as various accessories to implant these components inside the body. So, uh, the uh, research that I, that I described you earlier uh, is mainly performed in the Soren Group Italia, it's, uh, which is based in the Salugia site in the northwest of Italy. Uh, and uh, my project is mainly based on Percival. Percival is a 100% sutureless valve or RT valve replacement and uh, it's mainly used for uh, surgical approaches, including traditionally and minimally invasive. So what happens is, is that this material, the natural stent is actually, as you can see here, this is the way it's implanted inside the art root. So the way it's implanted in there, okay, it's collapsed through a particular accessory that we have, uh, that our company produces, and then it's, uh, it's expanded. So, you can understand there is some uh, fatigue uh, that this component is subjected to, as well as the uh, blood vessels, uh, when they're expanding and contracting, they also uh, tend to reduce the fatigue life of uh, this uh, component. So, so this part here is uh, the natural stent. And uh, so there, are, there have been many studies to improve this uh, component through various surface treatments, uh, thermal, electrochemical, and mechanical process. Uh, so I will focus my work focuses on uh, a mechanical surface treatment, which is shot cleaning. It's uh, I, for the people who work in uh, the aerospace and automotive industry. It's quite familiar uh, surface treatment, and it has been proven it has, that can work. It can work with the uh, various titanium alloys and steel. Uh, but few studies uh, have been, uh, there, there are no studies regarding the shock pinning effect on nitinol itself. So, few words about nitinol. I know that we have uh, an expert here from Politecnico di Milano. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you if you know much about uh, nitinol, but I'll say a few words. Uh, nitinol is an intermetallic alloy composed of nickel and titanium at approximately equal uh, equal atomic percentages and it has two unique properties super elasticity and shape memory so regarding its super, super elasticity it has um, uh, it has a superior elasticity under stress approximately 10 to 20 times more than any other ordinary uh, metal and it can uh, retain and it can spring back at a strain level of up to 11%. And also, it can retain, it can it remembers its uh, original shape when the temperature uh, above a uh, specific uh, temperature, which is the what we call the AF temperature, when it's uh, when the martensite becomes an austenite. Uh, and uh, furthermore, it has uh, it's biocompatible, which uh, makes it ideal for. Um, to be used in the medical device industry and especially in applications where, uh, which require a lot of, uh, of high fatigue life. So uh, these are two components uh, that uh, we are manufacturing at uh, Soaring Group. 
uh, sorry, Levan Logo. Uh, the first one is um, the first one is uh, some amyloplasty ring. It's mainly used for uh, mitral valve repair, and this is uh, uh, positioned in the arctic roots. Uh, so, a few words about shot pinning. Uh, probably most of you will know about this process. It's called working uh, a mechanical surface treatment, uh, in which um, through the impact of um, spherical uh, shots that create a dimple uh, on uh, the metallic component, this will create compressed residual stresses beneath uh, the uh, layer that's being uh, Paint. Hence, this will increase, tends to increase the fatigue life of uh, the material. So, based so the nitinol fatigue properties mainly depend on the material and surface conditions, and uh, these conditions are based on a strain normalization approach due to the nonlinear nature of the mechanical behavior of nitinol. And uh, its unique nonlinear shape and the unique nonlinear shape of the mo monotonic stress strain curve of nitinol leads to strain control tests because uh, the uh, fatigue threshold of uh, nitinol is uh, determined by, uh, by strain life. So, uh, for these tests, uh, we will uh, measure the fatigue data of uh, diamond shaped samples in order to simulate the V strut of the personal nitinol stand. So, by V strut, I mean this part here, okay? So um, I do have a picture after for the uh, uh, V shaped for the V strut. So we have divided this whole experiment into two sub experiments. The first experiment is simply to see if the shock cleaning process increase the fatigue resistance of these diamond shaped samples, uh, and uh, the experiment B is to see if there is an increase uh, of fatigue resistance how to achieve this maximum fatigue resistance at the lowest shot pinning durations because we cannot pin forever. So, um, for the experiment A, uh, we prepared uh, uh, 10 diamond shaped samples in total. Uh, these were coming from the raw material from a nitinol tube, they were laser cut, blasted, and uh, shot pinned. Normally, uh, for the uh, nitinol stands, after the shot pinning, they are also electropolished, and electropolishing is a process that actually tends to increase by a lot the fatigue life uh, uh, of, um, of nitinol stands. Although the shock pinning process is currently used in the company before uh, my research, it was mainly used because to round the edges and let's say to clean uh, the material, and they did have some knowledge that yes, it will increase the fatigue life by a bit, but they did not have solid proof that uh, it would uh, increase it. So basically, what I will be doing here, what I did in my research is we uh, did not electropolish any specimen. Uh, we uh, had five blasted, like laser cut blast, blast specimen, but not shot paint, and five shot paint, along with all the rest of the uh, processes. So. Uh, we also have like fully prepared five fully prepared uh, samples, and by fully prepared I mean also electropolished, just to compare between the shot pinned and electropolished uh, samples. And uh, well, these are some of the parameters. Uh, so the specimens were all all preloaded in order to simulate uh, the uh, insertion of the nitrogen stand inside the body, because as I mentioned earlier, the nitrogen stand is collapsed when it goes inside the body. So would be so since this material is going to be used, uh, we had the specimens preloaded, and they were all these five specimens. We had three uh, grip custom grip mechanisms. I can see it here. This is how it looked like. And you can see here how the basically yeah. This is how the uh, diamond shaped specimen looked like, and uh, so they were installed in uh, three uh, in three uh, grip mechanisms. Uh, where each grip mechanism can uh, have up to five uh, samples, and uh, they were connected to an MTS actuator uh, in a fatigue in a tensile test machine, uh, which applied the vertical displacement. So, um, okay. So basically, we had this experiment running. I'm going to show you the results uh, after. So now we're going to the experiment B. So for starters, uh, 
we have uh, we use the almond test method. So what the almond test method is is that we uh, have uh, standardized almond strips. You can see them here, which we pin this, in which we pin the surface. Uh, we pin the surface for a specific duration, and uh, well, after pinning this, the surface of these uh, strips, an arc height tends to create due to the compressive residual stresses. So, once after pinning, uh, we have this arc height in the uh, in these uh, strips. We place them here on the almond gauge and measure the arc height. So you can see here that after a couple of seconds. It the arc height tends to increase uh, very fast, and but it tends to saturate as well, and this is kind of expected. But this graph is kind of common, I mean, if you Google almond graph, you will find it, but uh, we just wanted to see it on our own, uh, and also to test this method. So, uh, going back to experiment A, this is, uh, these are the results between the non-pinned and pinned samples. Uh, so, here you can see that we have the not the non-pin samples reached just 30 cycles, while the pin samples reached 60,000 cycles. The electropolished one reached 70 million. Uh, so uh, you can see as well that there's a high dispersion. Okay, these error bars correspond to uh, standard deviations. You can see that there's a high dispersion, and this is uh, due to the fact that this is quite kind of normal in fatigue data. I hope you agree. And uh, I mean that's what I've been told, uh, but uh, the high dispersion is also due to the fact that we all used few samples. We used only like uh, eight samples, so it's four and four. So um, at least we know that this will this will be the limits of, of this uh, dispersion. But uh, we know that, but definitely it's our aim to do more iterations and decrease this error bar. So we do see like uh, that there is. Uh, even 30 million to 30,000 30, 30, of cycle difference, there's a difference of 30,000 cycles, that, that is still some difference, but we still need to optimize the process. So, um, this is, uh, so we did uh, some scan, uh, we used the scanning electron microscopy, and uh, this is uh, the, um, uh, the fracture in the non-pin sample. So, this is where the fracture started and uh, basically you can see that there's an overload, overload uh, fracture at a very early st stage so it breaks immediately while well, here it starts from here but there is a smooth propagation while the overload fracture starts from in the middle and again this is not from an uh, optimized pinning process we, this is just we imagined like a, uh, we took a random duration actually use the duration that we're currently using uh, in the company, in the production process. And, uh, oh, sorry, so you can see here, this is, if you can see the uh, diamond sample that this is from C to D, and here will be from here, C to D. So this will correspond here in the process, in the uh, diamond shape sample. So going back, so looking at the results of experiment B, uh, we did have some Complications here. Uh, so uh, what happened here is like one of the samples, although it was shocking more than the samples here, it broke. Uh, things happen, uh, but uh, basically this operation was uh, manual, so I was holding the gun, and uh, the sample is quite small. So when, and because in the shocking machine there's also a filter that tends to explode once in a while and scares me as well, so it tends to kick the gun backwards so and holding the pinning gun for 10 20 minutes it's not easy so so but this is a start so we can see at least that there's a saturation curve here uh, and um, since the almond strips are not 90 long and are not 90 long and are uh, steel uh, yeah of course the yeah, other steel we just in case we also measure the uh, weight loss percentage because uh, at least in my company we have a limit which is 8% so uh, we don't want to uh, uh, shop in uh, for a time that causes more than 8% of weight loss and uh, this is the most important graph because we have a relationship between the number of cycles and the shop in time so this is the uh, sample that caused me all the problem 
but at least we know that if we uh, pin more components, if we have more samples, we know that we can reach a saturation curve. There is a tendency here. And a uh, couple of, uh, yeah, to conclude, um, we noticed that uh, there is some improvement in the fatigue life of the shopping specimens. Uh, it's a manufacturing process that is a surface treatment that is worth adding uh, in the manufacturing process of stents and it takes like a 10 to 15 minutes, you don't need more than that. But uh, obviously uh, more samples are required, we want to do more iterations in the future, it's our aim. Uh, and um, we also have, uh, at the moment we also have some samples running. And uh, yeah, we want to perform additional experiments in order to have an optimized saturation curve. And for the moment, we have been using as a factor just the shopping duration. We did not consider the bar and the uh, impingement angle. For example, for the bar, it's at the moment it's at four bar. But uh, due to the fact that I'm working in the medical device industry, there's uh, there are several regulations. And changing it for more than three bars, we would have to go through several validation processes. Just a bureaucratic nightmare. And we would also be curious to see what happens to over to overpin specimens. So, uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to say this: it was supported by the European Commission. This work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.